Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this 135th painting tutorial on how to paint German oak leaf camouflage smocks. So in this tutorial we're going to be using Flejo's camouflage set. This is an eight color paint set that allows us to paint the main variants of oak leaf camouflage. And we're going to be using the information and step pamphlet to paint our figure and see how well it works. So first things first, we're going to lay a pre-shade of our model with flat black. Again, if you don't have an airbrush, you can apply this with a rattle can or thin down some flat black paint and apply a furry, furry thin coat with a paintbrush. So we're a pre-shade allowed to dry, now we're actually start working on the base coat for the camo smock and for that we're going to be using Flejo Saddle Brown. Once again I've tinned this with some airbrush flow improver, roughly 70-30 uh, paint thinner ratio and again I'm applying this very thinly, uh, I don't want to completely lose that pre-shade so I'm just going to build up the colour quite slowly and focus on the more um, upper regions of his torso where the light would be hitting the most. Again, you can just apply this directly out of the bottle with your paintbrush if you don't have an airbrush by just putting a small amount of water to thin your paint. So off the bat, this colour is a little bit too dark for 135th scale models, so I'm going to lighten the saddle brown by adding a small amount of sunny skin tone by Filejo, roughly 70-30 ratio. And I'm going to focus this onto the more raised elements of his camouflage smock. So with the highlight layer allowed to dry, now I'm going to start working on the actual camouflage blotches. And for this we're going to begin with olive green, once again included in the set. So we're a highlight layer allowed to dry, now we're going to start working on the camouflage blotches and begin creating the pattern. So the thing to bear in mind with working with any camouflage pattern is to do it in stages. So I'm going to start working on one area at a time with each colour. And I'm just going to start laying down kind of oblong or elongated blotches that have slightly rounded edges and kind of rounded fingers that come out of the, the main blotches. And I'm just slowly building it up. Again, I've switched down to a double zero round brush and I've tinned my paint again with a small bit of water. I have a photograph of a real German camo smock on my phone that I'm referring to out of shot here. And I'm just slowly building it up. This color is quite light. Um, as you can see, the camera kind of struggles to pick it up. But after one or two coats, you will get a very solid layer. But do lay down your paint quite thin. And once I'm happy with one area, I move on to the other. So now I'm moving on to his sleeves. And again, I just do one sleeve at a time. And then I move on to the next area. But bear in mind, another color has to go in here. So do ensure that you give yourself plenty of room. We can always come back and add more blotches later if we feel it's too empty. So now with our green blotches laid, now we're going to lay the dark green blotches. And with that, we're going to use dark black green again from the Flejo set. And these should somewhat interlock with the light green areas. And again, do them in similar elongated oblong uh, shapes. And again, it's really important to have some reference material. So a quick Google search on some camouflage smocks will really help you on this one.
I'm also being pretty careful. I don't want to again overwork this. You know, as you can see here, I'm slowly building it up. So with the main blotches done, I'm going to start putting in the camouflage dots. Now, I should put a caveat. I should have done this step later. So I would recommend that we do the dots after the, the washing highlights that follow after this, because I'm going to lose most of this detail. I'm going to have to come back and do it again. But I just thought I'd keep this part in so I could show you. Uh, just so you get a better idea. So what I'm doing is I'm taking our saddle brown, our olive green and our dark green black and I'm putting dots of these respective colors into the opposite color blotches. So for example with the dark green I'm putting in saddle brown and olive green blotch, uh, spots should I say and then in the light green I'm putting in dark green and also then in just the saddle brown areas I'm putting in dots of both colors. This isn't p-dot camouflage so I don't have I don't need to have so many dots of these colors, but I do find it helps bring everything together. And it also helps us rework some of these shapes if we want to make them a little bit more, make them appear a little less uniform. And again, having a, a fine tipped brush is very, very essential in this. Uh, in this case, I'm using a, a Windsor Newton Cotton Double Zero Round Brush. These are fantastic brushes and they're quite affordable too. But once I apply the wash, I'm going to lose a lot of uh, these dots when I highlight the model once again. So I'm going to have to come back in on a later step and re-establish all these dots. So best uh, practice is not to do this step at this moment. I, uh, I kind of learned the hard way here. So with the dots allowed to dry, we're going to add a wash. In this case, we're going to use chocolate brown, which is included in the set. And I'm going to tin it with tap water, roughly 80% water to 20% paint. In reality, I should have tinned it a little bit more heavily. And I'm just going to apply it in a thick enough coat. and just ensuring that I don't get any tide marks or any um, stains on the model. However, you're going to see here that we're going to lose a lot of the dot detail because this wash is quite intense. Alternatively, you could probably use um, my go-to Agrat's Earthshade from Citadel or GW, which would have done the job just as well. But I just wanted to follow the painting instructions actually included in the set to see how they worked. So now I'm coming in with a cotton swab here and I'm just removing the excess of the wash while it's still wet. Again, I'm just rolling the cotton bud over the model just to remove the excess. So now we're coming to highlight once more, and this is where we're going to lose all our dot detail. However, so I'm going to go back to our saddle brown areas and start cutting in the saddle brown back into the areas that we've originally painted in this color. And I'm just going to leave the washed areas in the recesses, such as in the troughs of uh, creases and what have you. This takes a little bit of time, however, you do get a very nice effect. Again, it's very important to keep our paint thinned. There's a drop or two of water in this just to help it flow a bit better and also to give it a slight uh, translucent quality so I don't completely lose the, the shaded areas. And I'm really just following the toxic creases as you can see here.
So now we're moving on to our second highlight for the saddle brown. In this case, I'm just going to mix some sunny skin tone into our mixture. Again, I'm adding about 30% sunny skin tone to our, our mix. And I'm just going to focus this lighter color on the more raised areas where the saddle brown is. So the tops of creases and his shoulders, for example. And this is going to this is actually going to make some of these details pop right out. It's actually quite impressive. Normally, I don't bother highlight camouflage, but this time I'm actually quite happy with it. So with the saddle brown areas highlighted, now we're going to move on to the uh, dark green or black green, should I say. And again, it's exactly the same process. So first we're going to begin with just straight up black green. And again, we're going to start re-establishing these uh, patterns. And also we're going to do the exact same for the olive green. Again, just using straight up olive green and we're going to start cutting those shapes back in with the original colour. I found with the olive green that there was no real need to add any sun, sunny flesh tone to the mix. It's already a light enough colour as it is. Now it's time to start repainting in the dots. So I would recommend that you leave the dots until this point. And again, we're just going to take our saddle brown, our uh, dark black green and our olive green and start putting the dots into their respective areas. So again, we're putting the opposites. So if it's a light color, I'm going to put a dark dot. If it's a, a light color, I'm going to put a dark dot into those areas. As simple as that. Again, take your time and don't overwork it. Don't put too many dots down. So just slowly work your way around the model doing one little area at a time. Take a break, come back to it, have a look at it and see how you feel. And then if you feel you need to add another dot. So with the camo allowed to dry, we're going to add a very, very light dry brush of Panzerase's DAC Uniform. I've removed the excess of the paint off this brush, there's only a very small amount, and I'm making sure that my brush is bone dry, which unfortunately it isn't, that's why I get some very strong build-ups that you see me wipe off the model. So make sure that your brush is as dry as dry can be, because if the brush is anyway damp, you will actually like destroy this effect. And this is just to simulate wear and tear and just a uniform and kind of mute down some of these colors. So now we're going to move back on to his, or should I say his helmet cover. And this is going to be done in the exact same method. So you're going to get to see it all again. And once again, just like on his smock, we're going to be begin with uh, cutting in each color. In this case, I'm not going to bother do light green blotches. I'm only going to do dark green. And again, I'm going to do oblong rounded shapes. And I'm just going to start cutting it in one blotch at a time. So once that's allowed to dry, again, we're going to come in with our chocolate brown wash. I'll get a little bit onto his head. I'm just going to wipe that away off camera. And with the wash allowed to dry, we're going to come back in again with our saddle brown and highlight the saddle brown areas once more. Exactly like how we did on the smock. Again, focusing on the tops of creases. And again, just trying to create a little bit of contrast. It's really important that we make the camouflage pop a little bit. And you can notice that I haven't 
done the dots. I've learned from my mistakes on the smock. I've le I'm going to leave the dots off until I'm finished highlighting. Again, I'm going to highlight the dark black green areas. Again, just using it straight out of the bottle. I'm really just tapping this color into the center of each of the camo blotches. That's why I found the best way to um, highlight the, the um, respective camouflage blotches. And then I'm going to add a second highlight to the um, black green areas by just mixing a tiny amount of sunny flesh tone. Not too much, just literally a tiny amount of it. I'm just going to focus it on some of the creases just to make some detail pop. You could have done this step as well on the smock, however I felt it wasn't really necessary, but you can if you so wish. And again, we're going to take some sunny flesh tone and mix it into our saddle brown and give those areas a highlight as well. And I'm going to start adding our dots. So you can you can see I've learned from my mistakes from the smock. I'm going to start adding the dots after I finish highlighting. And it just means I don't have to go back and do uh, to touch up my work. And again, we're just going to take our saddle brown, our olive green, and our dark uh, green black, or black green, should I say. And we're just going to start doing dots. Uh, again, I'm not going to overwork this piece. I'm not going to put loads and loads of dots in. After all, this is not P-Dot Camouflage. So again, we're going back to our dry brush of DAC Uniform. Again, just a very light one, and this time I've ensured my brush is bone dry. And I'm just very gently working this color in. And once again, it just adds a bit of wear and tear and fadedness, and also just helps uh, blend everything together. I'm also just going to give the model a little bit of weathering with Tamiya Model, model Master Set A, which is their light dust. Again, guys, if you're uh, curious on how I paint field gray, I have a tutorial covering just field gray. So do check out the description of this video to find that video. And with our camo and weathering done, we're just going to give the model a quick coat of Filejo Premium Matte Varnish. Again, I'm applying this through my airbrush. With our varnish now dry, our model is now complete. So I really hope you found this uh, tutorial useful guys. As you can see, oak leaf is not the most difficult camouflage in the world. If you just take your time with it, you can get some very nice results. Thank you so much guys for watching. I've been Shane, happy modeling, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.